Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all staying safe and healthy. I'd like to start off the first video of the year with thanking you for your continued support. Thank you to those of you who have been with my channel from the start for years and those of you who have subscribed recently. You're amazing and I love reading your comments. I started on YouTube in 2016 as the first Foodie dedicated channel to share my passion of Foodie with the world and to help people with their purchasing decisions. At the time, there were no dedicated Foodie YouTube channels and Foodie wasn't mainstream, so there wasn't nearly as much information on Foodie as there is today. I know it would have helped me tremendously if I was able to see many of the food I was interested in up close in videos before making many of my purchasing decisions. Additionally, I've also met friends along the way and have had so much fun in my foodie journey. I would love for you to subscribe if you haven't already. You can also hit the bell notification icon to be notified each time I upload a new video. Also, I haven't forgotten some of the requested videos. I'm slowly working on them. Today, I'll be sharing my hauls from the past couple of months during the holiday season and onwards. CD Japan had some fantastic promotions and it was hard to resist. I've always been very satisfied and happy with how the company packages their food and the delivery of my orders. They individually bubble wrap each brush and if it doesn't come in its own box, they will put it in their own CD Japan brand box. Then they will bubble wrap that box and the ones that come in their own branded boxes and put it in a shipping box with paper on top and seal it. I appreciate that they ship their orders in shipping boxes. The orders are wrapped and packaged safely and securely. In addition, I love that they have a great rewards program where you can earn points for your purchases and can apply them to future orders. Each point equals one Japanese yen. The rewards program is a way for CD Japan to say thank you for shopping with them and you can earn points in multiple ways. First, you receive 3% in points of the total price of the purchased products after your order has shipped. You don't just get the 3% if you spend over 5,000 yen in an order. You can also get an extra of up to 800 points for a purchase over 5,000 yen, depending on the threshold you reach. They also have quarterly reward points of up to 1,000 points that you can earn based off of the total purchase price from the previous quarter. So for example, since I hit the 50,000 yen threshold during last Q4, I received 1,000 points on the first day of the next quarter, which was January 1st, 2023, Japan Standard Time. Lastly, they send you 300 points for your birthday each year. I'll link the rewards page in the description box for you to check out the details and thresholds. It's awesome because it's points on top of points. They also come out with coupons every once in a while. For example, there will be ones that are 500 to 1,000 yen off for spending 10,000 yen or more. So you can use your points in conjunction with a the coupon, then earn more points from that purchase. In terms of shipping, Foodie and its accessories ship free at 12,000 yen or more. But if your package is really heavy, they will probably end up charging you for the extra weight. So try to place separate orders if you're able to have two or more 12,000 yen orders, or if you think it's heavy. I recommend FedEx and DHL if you're in the US because they're the quickest and you can usually get your package within a week. They recently had quite an eventful holiday season for Foodie with multiple promotions. A singles day sale, three Black Friday Foodie coupon offers, a holiday extra points rewards offer, year end and new year's coupons. I posted about them on my community feed and I'm glad that some of you were able to get some Foodie on sale, use the coupons and participate in the holiday rewards offer. Thank you so much to those of you who purchased using my affiliate links. It really helps my channel out. By the way, I am now also a Foodie Beauty affiliate, so if you prefer to purchase from there instead, I'll have my link down below as well. This is an accumulation of many orders. I was pretty good for most of 2022 and didn't buy much Foodie until the holiday promotion started, which was henceforth a downward spiral. <laughs> Not everything was purchased with a coupon or during a promotion, but I wish they could have been. At least I got reward points back for my purchases. On to the brushes. I waited a long time after getting these to remove most of them from the plastic wrap because promotions kept happening one after another. I ordered more brushes after the holiday promotions ended. I was waiting to get most of the brushes to film this video and I got sick multiple times. Some of these I got in November and still haven't opened because I wanted to unwrap them in this video. There are some I couldn't wait to open but I had pretty good self-restraint for the most part. I've removed most of them from the bubble wrap to look at but placed them back in their respective boxes afterwards. I'm not sure if I'll unwrap all of them since some are backups and I sometimes like to store them away without unwrapping them for a while. Maybe I'll do a follow-up video with how some look post-wash. Also, there's too many brushes to do comparisons with so I may eventually do reviews for some of them. A lot of times I use the brushes and then make review videos with them instead of showing them in haul videos. Sometimes I don't open them right away and it takes me a long time to get to using them. I'll go over the haul by brand. I'll start off with the Koyudo. The first brush is the White Canadian Scroll Blush Brush Red Gradation. I picked up another white Canadian scroll blush brush but in the red gradation handle this time. It has a black to red gradient with the name Yoshiki engraved in gold on the bottom.
I'm hoping that I got a nicely bundled one that's on the dense side. It's the same gradation color as the giant Indian scroll set they had in 2021. The handle is longer than the regular Sakura Makiya blush brush. Next is the Makiya Gray Scroll Powder Brush Cherry Blossom Red. CD Japan describes this as a round flat gray scroll powder brush. I'm not sure if mine is bundled round on the top, but we'll see. The website listing says it was released in 2015, but I saw them restock it with a bunch either in 2020 or 2021, so the hair quality is most definitely not 2015 hair quality. I wish. There's a lot of lighter white or yellow hairs on the exterior. That's something that older Koyuto Grace Girl brushes didn't have. The Gold Sakura Makiya is lovely against the red handle. It'll be nice for finishing powders. I got the Fuofu with the black handle. This is the more affordable version of the original Fuofu with three types of wood on its handle. I wasn't expecting much since I didn't like the hair on the one with the three types of wood and the magenta pink one I got after that is nice, but the hairs aren't amazingly soft. This one is quite soft and I'm really impressed. But we'll see after I wash it a couple times. Maybe it's just the conditioner. It's pretty soft on the back of my hand too. I usually use the back of my hand as a softness gauge before I wash it and put it on my face just to see whether or not it's like soft or has any pokey hairs. So this one is quite soft. Although after a while it does feel kind of prickly. <laughs> but yeah, initially it was quite soft. Regardless, I am pretty impressed. I also like that the engraving on the handle is iridescent. So while it's not the most high quality handle because I'm not even sure if this is wood, like it feels plastic to me. It still feels like a nice brush because of the ferrule and the head, like the ferrule gives, gives it a good amount of weight. I also love that it's a brushed gold. I also got quite a few that came in the CD Japan brand box because they didn't come in their own respective boxes. I picked up the Fupa One Blush Brush Pink. This is discontinued, but they brought some back in very limited quantities. It's dyed goat, but made out of baby goat chest hair and is super soft. This one didn't come with the Koido logo. The hairs are short and extremely dense, so I'm not sure how I feel about using it to apply blush. Maybe I'll try it for foundation first. I think it'll actually wipe away my base underneath if I use it for blush. It may also produce clown cheeks. It's so dense. It is very soft for dyed goat. I don't usually use this type of super densely packed short hair brush for blush. It's a little bit small for pressed powder foundation, but we'll see. I think it should be okay. I'm still pretty bummed that they discontinued the Fupa series. It was one of their signature series. I love that they use baby goat chest hair for the series too. It's so soft. Next is the Deca Fupa One Extra Large Powder Brush. This is the same as the blush brush, but an extra large version with a black handle. It's massive. The hair lengths are the same, which is interesting since I would have thought the blush brush would have longer hairs. These hairs are also super soft and I'm excited to try both out. This is a huge foundation brush. <laughs> Even though it's densely packed, it has a good amount of flexibility. You know what reminds me of these? The Bichetto Puffies. This one is baby goat chest hair and does feel softer, but the Bichetto Puffy, even though it's made out of Sokoho, it is very soft as well. It's a pity the Koyuto ones are discontinued because they have such nice hair. Next is the Fupa 13 Small Liquid Foundation Brush. It's also discontinued and has soft baby goat chest hair, but it's undyed. This is the angled sister to the Fupa 8. Do you remember that one? It had a flat top and it was basically a mini Fupa 7. This one will be good for getting into the crevices of the face. I love Koyuto's shimmery handles. This one has little micro shimmers on them. I think it's hard to tell in this lighting, but it's really cute mixed with the baby pink. The next two brushes are similar to the CG Japan Beauty Tapered Silver Fox eyeshadow brushes they came out with in the winter of 2021 made by Koyuto. The weird thing about these ones were that they came in two sizes, but they were the same price. Usually the smaller brush costs less. There's an S and an L. This one is the Yoshiki Tapered Eyeshadow Brush S.
Here's the Yoshiki Tapered Eyeshadow Brush L. This is labeled as the large size, but the hair length is one centimeter shorter than the medium from the CD Japan Beauty release from 2021. I would consider this as a medium based off of that. I think this would make a nice crease brush and actually should have gotten two of these instead of the small. I don't mind a diffused crease color, but I prefer dark and pigmented outer V and Silver Fox isn't known to apply heavily like goat. It's very soft. It's not starched. Oh my gosh. It's this pointy. <laughs> oh no. Next are brushes from the Kakishi Buzome series. I never liked the look of the persimmon dyed hair, but I've continued to hear great things about the series since it was released a little over two years ago. I finally caved and decided to pick up two eye brushes first to try out. I always prefer undyed goat hair over dyed. The hairs on the eye brushes look much better in person, and I've always loved the cherry birch handles that originally came from their Mizume Zakura line back in 2016. The series just looks so much better in real life than in photos. I almost got the cheek brush this time, but decided to get it maybe another time. I'm curious to know whether it shares the same softness to the BP16 and applies similarly. So for those of you who have both, please let me know. I did not like the BP16, <laughs> so if it's around the same softness, then I probably won't like the cheek brush. This is the KSC04 Large Eyeshadow Brush. This is such a pretty brush. I think I got one that's nicely dyed. It's dyed all the way from the top to the bottom where some I've seen have a gradient. The hairs glisten. It's flat and tapers at the top. Personally, I prefer the hair thickness to be about the same at the base all the way up to the top for maximum strength. It feels really soft on my fingertips. I almost got a second one because it's so nice. This is the KSC06 pencil brush. It's a small rounded pencil brush. I thought this was really small when I saw the stock photo and saw it in person, but if you have hooded eyes, small eyes, or not a lot of lid space in general, then this would be a great size for the outer V. It's teeny tiny, and mine is rounded at the top. I'm not sure if it varies and some people have pointed tops, but I like rounded tops for the outer V. If you prefer to do things on your lower lash line or both lash lines, then you would probably want one that has a tapered point. I got the Kyoto Psycho 3D powder brush in the black gradation and black handle. It has the slope shaped where it's shorter on one side and gradually gets higher on the other. It's soft, but I don't think it's soft enough for me during the colder months when my skin is dry. It's also denser than I thought. I thought it would be floppy due to the shape, but it's got a decent amount of resistance. It'll make a nice travel brush when I need a lot of coverage. This is also one of Shosho Long's favorite shapes they love to make. I also like this shape. This is the Itsukushima Otori Gate Powder Brush. This will be an overview of the handle since I'm super excited about it. It's a limited edition product designed with mother of pearl craftsmanship of the Otori Gate and maple trees of Itsukushima Shrine at Miyajima, which are said to be symbols of Hiroshima Prefecture. Itsukushima Shrine at Miyajima Island is famous for their floating tori gate in the water. I looked up the symbols on the Japanese Hiroshima Prefecture website, and the maple tree is one of the symbols of the prefecture. Technically, the Itsukushima Shrine's old tori gate is not an official symbol of Hiroshima, since it's not on the symbol page of the website, but a landmark and a place that it's famous for. I'd like to think that Kyoto timed this release to try to coincide with the completion of the Otori renovation that began in 2019 and was completed in November of 2022, but maybe it was just a coincidence since the general public wasn't notified or aware of it when it would actually reopen until it reopened. Also, if you're a big Momiji or Maple Leaf fan like I am, some of the Momiji trees that symbolize Hiroshima are the Iroha Momiji and O Momiji, which are the ones you typically see during foliage season in Japan. There are many different species of Maple Leaf trees. It's exciting every time Kyoto releases brushes with Radin handles. I'm a big fan of them and especially love the Mount Fuji one with the Sakura design. The pink scattering petals combined with the white Mount Fuji on a black handle are perfection. It'd be awesome if they released it with gray scroll for the same price as this brush. Kyoto has had Momiji painted maki in the past and I'm happy that they've incorporated it into a Radin design. The mother of pearl inlay are iridescent and reflective at certain angles. The head is made out of gray scroll. Red and gold Koyuto handle and ferro combinations are also a favorite of mine. I almost bought the blush brush too, but passed and now I'm wishing I did. 
I hope Koido releases more Radin brushes in the future. They're magnificent. The hairs are pretty soft. It feels silky, fluffy, and airy, similar to old Koyoto Gray and Red Scroll. The color of the hairs are on the medium brown side. The bundling looks uneven, but I'll check again post-wash. It doesn't have the tons of white hair like the newer Gray Scroll brushes have. Also, Koyoto had another price increase on some brushes at the end of December, which I posted about on my community feed. I hope Koyoto and CD Japan can restock this and the blush brush eventually, because these are really nice brushes. I hope this was helpful. Thank you so much for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe, and follow me on Instagram. See you in my next video. Bye!